having just done the rig test so we know it's all sort of good to go, we've got no leaks, we've bled all the air out of the system. Now I've already re zeroed the burette and I've re zeroed the scales because you always get that little bit of variation. So now we go for the main test. Again, I do apologise for the noise. And what I'm going to do is I'll call out the displacement once we hit working pressure. So it should be about that sort of just under 8cc's again. And when I get up to our test pressure, um, again I've got to shut it, I've got to lock it all down for 30 seconds. And when we get there, I'll read out what the displacement was. So here we go. Okay, so working pressure we've got 7.8. So now we'll keep going to our test pressure. Just to make sure we've got no leaks on the water. And there we are. So now we'll just wait our 30 seconds. And while we're there, we've hit 13.5 cc's. Now I know this cylinder's got a maximum of 15, so it's passed. Now we've just got to wait. And while we're waiting, we'll just check to make sure we're not leaking that we're sort of holding our test pressure and that's our time done so now all the way back down as you can see with the much more cylinder this all works a lot quicker so not having to pump as much fluid into the cylinder to do the same job Cool, now we're back to nothing. We've got a residual stretch of about 0.5 cc, so sweet F8. Right, that's that done. Now, next step is we'll unhook everything. Right, so what I'm going to do on this one is I've obviously got the camera set up on the scales. Now you can sort of just see the decimal point in it. Now I'm currently just testing a 9 litre BA cylinder. So just keep an eye. Um, I'll call out the pressure. So I'll call out the working pressure which is 310 bar. And then I'll call out the once I get up to test pressure. And we'll actually see how much a 9 litre cylinder actually expands. So this is probably going to get really noisy, so just bear with me.
the set of drinking crystals for a dog syllable. Five hundred and seventeen bar. Alright. No, that's all done. I'm gonna take it take everything off and unattach the cylinder from the split top plate. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the camera running the whole time so you can actually see the whole process and give you an idea of what's actually involved and how long it actually takes to do this. The first thing we want to do when we disconnect it is we just want to drain the water out of the scale. Which is why we sort of leave it all out every time we use it. Disconnect our feed line and um, disconnect our high pressure. Let's close our valve just so we don't empty the burette. Fortunately, if you get air coming through here because the pump feeds directly from this, you get air in the pump, it tends to mess things up a little bit. And these things aren't cheap. We know we've, this is our second one. So now we just want to undo the clamps. Now just so you know these clamps actually do put a fair bit of force on the slit and there's a big o-ring that runs right around the inside of the lip. And again we've got a high tech lifting device and our expensive shackles. I think we actually stole one off, uh, stole one, off one of the other's boats. Obviously, this is a little bit more entertaining when I've got one of the big BA cylinders on it. Yep. Tension off. A big ass spanner. Gone. Just lift this out of the 
plate. Sonic bag over here, it's not a mini on plate, making mine. Undo adapter. Try and get some of the water out of it. Now again, back to this one. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video about Loctite and the threads, and it is literally my pet hate. Um, this has just gone up to you know, 517 bar, 7,500 psi, with a little o-ring. Um, these are the same o-rings that go on the valves when they're installed into the cylinders. Um, and when they're torqued up, they will not come undone. So the use of Loctite is completely pointless. Uh, as I said, the only thing it does is makes it impossible to get the almost impossible to get the valves out, and it does actually damage the threads to a small degree as well. Um, which also is caused by people over talking them. So now the hard, really hard part. Is that this is a lot harder with a nine liter cylinder. You can see them all stacked up just down here. We've got a grown up. So, the draining tool. That's it. Now, while I've got it here, give it a quick dry off and I will actually write the result of the test on the cylinder so when it comes time to do the paperwork for it that's all I need everything else is obviously on the cylinder itself so the last well, one of the last steps is I'll now go dry the cylinder um, I won't actually video it uh, but I will explain it we fill the cylinder with hot water usually about 55 degrees Leave it in there for a few minutes so it can actually heat up the cylinder. Now, a problem with carbon fibre is it is a really good insulator. So it takes quite a while to actually heat the cylinder through. And so once it's heated through, we'll drain it out again. And then we'll just blow compressed air into it with the cylinder. So down pretty much like this. And that gets all the water out of it. So it gives you a nice dry cylinder. Um, and then once we've done that we'll put the valve back in, I'll put a stamp on it and then I'll put it through the computer and file the certificate, the cert for it. Um, obviously with a breathing cylinder, having water inside the cylinder is incredibly bad news. Um, if it gets into a high pressure regulator it can actually freeze the regulator and stop it from working. Now, if you're a firefighter and you're relying on this to live for your life and that happens, it's bad news. Um, I had it recently, there was actually a cylinder. Um, it had about two tablespoons of water sitting on the bottom of it. Actually, technically the top, because BA is actually run that way. And I undid the valve, and normally you can undo them we've got this tool that goes into the valve and you can actually use, do it, undo it by hand. Now, with all the water that was in it, it had gotten into the, into the thread and actually corroded all of it out and basically jammed the valve itself in there. So I ended up having to put that in and then put an extension on it just to undo it. And it makes, it basically squeals when you undo it because it's just grinding itself out. Loctite does the same thing. Um, Hence, that's my pet hate. Um, after taking the valve out, that was just white, a white, pale white grease, which was literally just all the um, aluminium oxide um, that was just sitting in there, and it still had water on it. Uh, so I actually had to scrub it out 
before I could eat, um, just so I could inspect it. And the thread itself was actually, it had quite a high amount of damage on it. Uh, it's still passable, but it will f eventually form cracks and potentially fail the cylinder bef before its life. So, hence we have a, we've act our standard is to make sure any high pressure cylinder is completely dry, just for that reason. I mean, any damage to the threads, if one of these goes, they are incredibly dangerous. So, but no, this one's fit and healthy. It's still got a few, it's a few years left to go. So, hopefully the owner will be nice and happy that it's all um, tested, and by the time he gets it back, it'll be all certified as well. So, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, and there's plenty of, a, plenty of other videos of people doing the valves and things like that on these. I just wanted to show our, our process for testing them. So I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. So please rate, comment, subscribe. Just kidding. Uh, but please rate it. And if you have any questions or just want to leave a comment, feel free. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. So, cool.